Good morning. Good morning, lovely people. I hope you're doing well on this um, spring day. It's a little chillier today in here, um, but uh, I've got used to it being quite quite a quite a greenhouse actually, um, which I I really enjoy. Because um, I I used to go off to um, when I had money, I used to go off to Thailand um, every year to um, to retreat and and get a bit of proper bone heat. <laughs> Um, so I could you know, wander around without, with, with taps off, as they say in Scotland. And um, yes, and I've been missing that for the past few years, but since having my building in place, which is only a, it's only a year and a bit now, um, well, it's, yeah, it's a year and a bit, I don't know, I, I've lost track. But um, yeah, since having the b building in place, in, in when the sun comes out, if I want to get my own infrared sauna in here, I can, it's lovely. And then um, of course if it gets too much, I open the doors, so fantastic. Also feel privileged that I'm, I have this space at this time during lockdown, where, um, yes, where I can uh, be, in a, be in a space that feels a bit sacred and a bit, um, a bit like it's in, in nature, you know? Um, yeah, so I've been quite grateful, really. Anyway, uh, uh, yes, I hope you're well, wherever you are. Uh, this is your Yoga Solutions Live on this um, 31st of March, 2020, 2020. And I, I had one question from a long-term student up in Scotland, Alan. He's a... He's a Tai Chi practi practitioner and teacher. You should check him out. He, he's venturing online now. And uh, yeah, you should, you should try him out. Um, he applies my work to, to his. And uh, th this, is, this is kind of what I want to, uh, what, what I want my work to be used for. It's a, um, as I explained in my recent post about um, my envirosomatic thing, it's an umbrella approach that <coughs> kind of brings the reality and clarity of whatever your physical art is. Um, it brings it to you, it, it sort of, and it, um, it does it because while it removes conflict within the body, but the, <coughs> the way it does that is by removing conflict with what you're doing um, in space, in, in the environment. So. Um, uh, that it, it just works for everything. So, so, um, and uh, and most people that are into some sort of physical art are in it for the for the um, sense of other. I think for the sense of meditation that come arises. E e you know, even uh, uh, people that go to the gym. You know, uh, they're there pumping away and they they get into the zone. And it's it's this sort of. Um, state of meditation that you're <coughs> that arises when the when the body locks into a, a kind of a useful um eh, into a happy relationship with what it's doing and uh we're, we're, you know because we're, we're human we're, the body is incredible in that it can it can do that through resilience as in we can push we can push through difficulty and then we feel invincible because we're past we feel like we're past the pain, but um, of course the the body uh, will tell you about that at another time. Uh, but uh, the, this umbrella approach to things, which includes Tai Chi, of course, um, gives gives you an overview of the relationships that kind of make the body happy, uh, and so you you lock into that um, sort of freedom and power without having to push through pain. You, you lock into it because it's the nature of the body itself when it's when it's working in harmony with its environment so um why did i go off on that i don't know oh oh because alan asked the question that's right <coughs> the question was um around bandas and uh, uh most people that are yoga practitioners will be will have heard the term at least um a banda, the, the, the description of the word banda means lock. Um, and there are, well, there are lots of them, actually. <coughs> um, I, I prefer the word attitude. 
or something, because it, it, it's about a it's about a whole body expression uh, that is kind of centered in certain areas in the body that helps essentially with um, how you breathe, it helps um, shift the breathing to a place uh, to a relationship that is more supportive um, in what you're doing. Kind of depends what you're doing. And uh, yeah, it's so it's yes, yeah, how you breathe and how and how um, core supportiveness evolves through the breath. That's its purpose. Um, most people do them, as in they they become physical tensions within the body. Uh, it works. It, it, it works in that uh, those holding physical tension in, in those particular in the particular banda shape ways will help you do postures. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, and, that, that, and that's great. Um, so uh, so people know what they are. Um, there's Uddhyana Banda, which is the one centered in the, in the middle. Up, uh, Uddhyana means upward flying. And um, Banda means lock, so it's an upward flying lock. Uh, that's what it means. Um, I talk about, let, let's put myself on a broader screen so you can uh, see me a bit, bit better. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I talk about, um, instead of uh, Uddhyana Banda, which is kind of that, that feeling, where you draw, draw in and up your belly and, and lock around it, um, I talk about making space. Uh, <clears throat> and I, I answered Alan in the, um, in the comments, um, about this, it's um, the bandas refer to natural things that occur when you, when your when your um, body is appropriately uh, responding to what's around you. When you feel cheerful, for example, you feel um, lighter in the middle, and uh, there's a there's pranayamas that can help you find that cheerfulness in the middle. But um, essentially, if you are if you're happy. And, and you know it, um, what generally happens is the middle of you gets light. Um, if you're happy and you express it, the inside of you comes up. Um, so uh, an example I use in my workshops is when, when there's, um, when, if you see a baby sitting, sitting on the floor and it's happy to see mum as she comes in, the baby does this. It, it, there's an upward flying thing that happens because um, there's a there's an opening of the heart, and there's a, but but um, it's not um, a lifting of your back, which is more of a stress response. It, it's an upward flying thing from the inside that is um, a heart opening, welcoming gesture. Okay, and it requires a lightness of being on the inside for that to happen. That's that's the upward flying bit. That's um, the Udayana bit. Um, that's half the story because that's that's your relationship to space from what happens in here, uh, and and if you're following me, if you're if you're trying this out to see see if there's anything in what I'm saying, um, you can try and embody the you know imagine the situation where where you are unfettered in your expression, and you're incredibly cheerful to see someone, really happy to see someone. What happens in the middle with that? Yeah. And you know your your diaphragm comes up, your ribs join in with that. But then um, you, you can't stay there forever. Um, you, uh, you have to be grounded as well. You have to let go. And if with that upward flying lock you then relax, the ribs gather around that space. In principle, um, what happens uh, generally for uh, us people that have grown up a bit? is because we've got used to lifting and dropping. Um, we have the, we might be able to get that open-hearted feeling, but then when we relax, the chest drops and the diaphragm drops and that fluid drops with it, so we sort of retract from the cheerfulness. But if you can stay with a heart-opened relationship to space and the ribs can drop around that, which they will do if you're supported by your earth, um, now it, it might seem like it's a given because you can't, you know, you can't do anything about gravity. It feels like we're being pulled down all the time. That's, that's not what I mean. You get supported by your Earth when you engage 
with your earth looking for support. That's, that's the way it works. So if having opened your heart and allowed a cheerful uplift on the inside of the body, if you then look for support by, by engaging with it, so I'm pressing down with this side, because uh, that's, that's the side I'm, I'm looking at, if I press down, the ribs anchor down with it. And that becomes me releasing tension and the breath. So now I have an upward flying lock, as in Uriyana Banda. <laughs> okay? um, or you could suck your belly in and, and tighten around your ribs. But that is a contrivance that interferes with breath and movement. Um, you can hold on to that and you'll be sort of safe to chuck yourself around in postures if that's what you want to do. But it, it also means that when you stop holding that tension, it disappears. Uh, the thing I'm talking about is getting you to actually relate to life <laughs> in, a, in an expressive way, relate to your earth in a supportive way, and the outcome is an upward lightness in space and a centered gathering around that space as you arrive on your earth. So that's Udi Anabanda. Udi Anabanda, yeah? Okay. Um, what's it for? Well, you, you, you can, we, we can try, let's see. Um, it's, it's very useful in standing. Let, let's put the, um, let's get um, another camera on. There we go, it's a bit dark. I'll see if I can brighten it up a bit. Oh, hang on. Um, this one here. Let's see if I can make it a bit brighter. Uh, here we go. Good. So, <coughs> so uh, you know, most of us, when we stand up, um, through the various trials and tribulations of life, the, the heart has sunk for most of us and the diaphragm has sunk underneath it. So we get this middle-aged spread thing where, where uh, and, and we have the idea that the inhale is something we lift for and the exhale is something we collapse into. Um, this thing that happens in the middle and that is talked about in yoga as Uddiyana Banda, um, in, in Ashtanga they, they recognize the lower half part as well. They talk about the uh, Uddiyana Banda happening from your, your lower belly. Um, uh, we, could de we could debate about these things. It doesn't really matter. What, what we're looking for is for this fluid space to not be hanging off the spine when we stand so that we have to lean back and rely on the spine to carry our weight. Okay? But what we want is an upward flying sense of being supported. What we want is an upward flying sense of support from our contact. And you might notice that the thing, the shape that I'm making here, that I'm describing, is your diaphragm. And the ribs that wrap around the diaphragm, the structure around it. Um, and again, you can suck your belly in and you can squeeze your ribs, but uh, you can see how tense that is. Uh, you know, it's, it's not it's not a natural um, thing to do. What is natural is to find a relationship from your touch that allows that to happen from from your ground. You see, um, I, I was talking about when when I was uh, sitting. I was talking about a relationship to space, and that's true here as well. But um, that relationship to space has to come from inside so that we're not sort of just leaning back and pushing forwards in space. The relationship has to come from inside. And the, uh, because we've stood up and most likely we've caused holding, uh, some sort of holding pattern in the spine, you might have to activate that, the, the emptying, the, the, the hollow belly feeling. But, what, um, so, so join, join me if you want to try it. Draw up your belly, and you can use your wings to help to make it a bit more natural. 
you know, if you if you were if you were flying, then the, uh, if you if you've ever done breaststroke, you know what it feels like in here. You know the the meeting of the fluid on the outside causes the diaphragm to come up. You know, so use your wings when meeting space to help this space on the inside come up and you have to join in it won't do it all by itself if you're here going going like this nothing's going to happen you have to join in on the inside of yourself to help this stuff come up and it'll be tense because you know you're not used to moving your organs around it'll be tense but um if you can cause this fluid to come up however you do it right and if at the same time you allow the the heels to be a bit light on the ground, because it all relates how we touch the ground, it, mean, it means we're, you're starting to give some responsibility to your actual feet, these things. They're your feet. Okay. And the down and out through your toes, through your paws, can help sustain, support this fluid movement up. Uh, basically, because we're taking the weight off the spine. And uh, the releasing diaphragm, um, as air leaves the body, the, the diaphragm gets a chance to release up rather than the structure hang down. See? So the diaphragm comes up. The structure starts to wrap around that, um, possibly with some effort. And if, you, if there's not enough of that going on, you can help it along by sticking out your tongue. There's a sima mudra. <laughs> If you do that, you should find this stuff wrapping around it. So you've got the lock part, you've got the upward flying part, you've got the lock part. When you've got all that stuff going on with weight on the feet, what you can do is leave the weight on the feet and sort of extend your heels away from you to reach the ground. And you'll find some very powerful musculature working in the other direction through your thighs. But what happens around here this central space, is that the upward flying part, the diaphragm releasing up, is caused by the heels going down, and the ribs wrap round to connect to the feet, to, to anchor you down around the outside of it. So by arriving on your feet, and it's been quite effortful so far, by arriving on your feet, the work of the legs takes over the organization of this fluid structure. So if you, if you follow my instructions, what you should be feeling now is you're standing through, your, through powerful legs, through powerful feet. And the result is this space is a different shape. It, it's upward flying and it's wrapped around and it's supported by the earth. So it feels strong. Strong, not tense. It was tense when you were sucking it up and <coughs> squeezing, it, squeezing it in. That's the reorganization of the structure using local muscles. When the relationship to your touch kicks in, the same muscles are working, but it's not local effort because it's a response. It's a response to your earth. There'll be other things going on. Um, we, along with this effort, you might have got tense around the base of the spine. You don't need to be. You, you, you relax wide across there if, you, if you've got support from the earth. And that creates a bit more space inside here as well. And when, when, you, when you sort out complications around the pelvis and the base of the spine, because uh, that, that's, um, that's another whole um, thing, uh, you start to get into the possibility of a, another banda it could be the same one if you if you if you if um, you think of uh, the ashtanga version of uddhyana banda it could be the same banda there's a there's a smile across the lower belly that joins in and it's the same thing you can you can get that contact that that smile to relate to how you touch the ground so weight in the feet to get space in here a sort of a widening feeling to wrap round and get the heels down so that the pelvis, so the thigh bones and pelvis sort of support you inwards around that space. Underneath that you've got the pelvic floor emptying up with the release of the breath. And that's 
and, and it, the whole sort of uh, area, the whole structure, the whole shape. There's an, in, there's an upward flying part from the root and then there's a downward anchoring part through the pelvis and legs. Um, actually, the structure of the pelvis is being sent up by the, by the legs, but it feels like you know, powerful grounding. And the result is um, a change around the base of the spine. We could go on. Um, I would like to uh, um, give it a bit more. You know, I, I, I looked nice, nice and deeply at uh, Udiana Banda, gave you some good clues there. So I'd rather um, do that with the others. But uh, and we're at time now, so um, I think that's roughly where. I will leave it. The, uh, uh, yeah, I think that was useful. I hope so, anyway. Um, the question was simple. What is... Uh, it was about the banders. Can you talk about the banders? I don't know if you're feeling it now. If you, if you worked that with me, there was, a, there was all the sort of uh, mechanics of what's supposed to happen, how you do it, and all the rest of it. But if you joined in with me in, uh, as firmly as I got involved, Right now, as you breathe and as you relax, with a bit of luck, when you let go of tension to your ground, the result is a feeling of in and up instead, instead of the usual collapse down and heaviness. There will be more of a natural responsiveness and more of a natural relationship to Earth that invites this sort of ongoing upward flow that is perfectly natural for all of us if we're not if we're sort of arranged well and supported and you know have a good relationship to our own environment um, yeah so just see right this moment having done that how does it feel is there an echo of this upward flying containment around the middle. If it is, then you've got an idea of what the Yanavanda actually is. Because all that other stuff was us trying to um, elicit the natural responses. Okay, I think uh, that'll do for, for me for today. Um, let's see, what have we got here? Yeah. Um, yes. Okay, so uh, what have I got coming up? Well, um, this well, today I've got my classes, and a, a few people booked up. They're getting they're getting a bit fuller now, so I might have to um, put on another class in the week. Um, if there are, if anyone has any preferences that you'd like to me to do, uh, uh, basically it's, it's two classes on a Tuesday at the moment, um, and yes, yeah, so you can come to you can book on either of those. But if there's another day in the week that you would prefer, I might I might do a poll on on the website. Um, other things, I'm really quite excited. I've done my first yoga solutions course. It's, um, it's a short course, as in uh, the sessions are just uh, between 20 minutes, maximum 35, 40, I think. It's the longest, and there's six of them. And uh, the first yoga solutions course is on the sacred breath. I'm really quite excited. I haven't, haven't done the topping and tailing yet, so it's not out it's not for sale quite yet, but uh, that'll be that'll be on the website soon, and uh, it's a it's purely recorded. It's, um, it's you buy it, it's yours. You can do with it as you please, and it's um, it's on the sacred breath, and it it goes all the way from just introducing you to the idea of uh, breathing choices and how to how to sort of awaken those choices. Um, through to advanced pranayamas, all the way through. And uh, you know, once, you, once you've bought it, um, it's yours for life. So you can take your time with any, any of it. And like I say, they're just 30-minute sessions or so. And um, I'm going to make it uh, nice and cheap. So that, um, and it would be very useful for, for, for everyone, really. Uh, you know, if you're not a yoga teacher, <laughs> then you, you, it's useful to get a handle on, on um, the breath. Um, it's because it's where the answer is actually in, in yoga practice and physical stuff and if you are a yoga teacher uh, then this will give you an advanced kind of clarity around how how these pranayamas work and um, and uh, what they are actually what they're based on 
So that that will be coming soon, and uh, yeah, keep an eye out for for me advertising that because I'm, I'm I'm very pleased with it, and does the job. Um, so th th that that's all things aside, live stuff. I've got my classes today. I'll, I may may put on a second one in the week if I get in enough inquiries. Uh, this Thursday, I have the second introductory workshop of my. Um, uh, my core intelligence series, yeah, and this one is uh, it, it's timed well with my other stuff because it's um, the innate wisdom of the breath and spine is the tagline on it. Um, it's the third one of the sensory intelligence series. It's it's definitely CPD stuff, so uh, you kind of need um, at least a couple of years of yoga underneath your belt to join it. It's um, and this second one, the second part is um, a second introductory workshop. There there've been there's been one already. If you book this one, you get access to the recording of the first one as well. If you book the course, the full course, which is uh, six weeks from April 16th, um, you get access to both anyway, uh, for free. Um, so um, that's on the website. And that's this Thursday evening, 6.30 p.m. Um, then Saturday, I've got an online workshop uh, my morning Saturday morning retreat. Uh, they they seem to be going down rather well. Very much enjoying them. Two hours, eleven till one, just twenty quid uh, for a live place. And you can, uh, if you if you want to, if you want it cheaper, you can book a, a, a view only place where where I can't see you and, and you don't interact with me. So, um, but if you if you want a live and interactive place where you get to ask questions and I can guide your practice directly because I can see you on screen, that's just twenty quid. And that's Saturday. That's on the events page on my website. Uh, yeah, and you can always book a, a free 15-minute one-to-one with me. Uh, if you're not, you know, if you've not worked with me directly before, you can always um, you can book a free initial consultation, 15 minutes. I'll give you an idea of what I can do for you, and uh, might even give you something you can do straight away. You know, um, I like I like to help. Um, so. Yes, go ahead and look at all my online offerings. So I've been doing, I've been offering this stuff online for a long time now, and um, I almost feel sort of guilty that um, the the world, in the way it is, is bringing people's attention to my work. Um, but at the same time, you know, it's been my mission for <laughs> for thirty years now, and so so um, I'm happy that. Um, People are coming along and enjoying my stuff uh, a lot more these days. So um, yes, so you do. Uh, yeah, if you if you want a place, you need to book because um, places go quite fast. Okay, that's me. I think um, yeah, that's all I have to say. Lots of love to you. All. I look forward to seeing you on the on um, the next Yoga Solutions uh, or on a class or or something else. I, I yeah, hope to see you soon. Lots of love to you. Bye now.